beautiful song. celebration. Today we are gathered to witness the union of Amber and Zach. Today we culminate almost nine years of friendship and love with a revelrous celebration. Uniting two individual paths into a single journey requires thoughtfulness and intention. It requires small acts of generosity. It requires honesty. And Amber and Zach's story would not be complete without their community. Amber and Zach have asked me to extend their sincere gratitude for the effort all of you have made to be here today and to remain a constant and supportive presence in their lives. Many of you have traveled far distances, 
Others join the couple for regular dinners or bring flowers on opening night. You have all provided listening ears, supportive words, and acts of service. And they recognize the enormous impact that you have made on their lives. Today they ask for each of you for your blessing, encouragement, and lifelong support for their decision to be married. They also remember other loved ones who cannot be here to share this moment with them today. Amber was raised to know God as love, and they now ask that you join them in a moment of silence and that you center yourself in the loving presence that will carry us through this day. Thank you. So I have the absolute privilege and <laughs> honor of getting to officiate this wedding today. And in doing so, they allowed me to have the mic for a few minutes to give them a <laughs> personal reflection about the couple. <laughs> if you have spent any period of time with these two, you know them to be wildly intelligent, kind, generous, and also rather good at projecting their voices. <laughs> <coughs> These are your friendly neighborhood goofballs who will offer you a homemade sourdough, model your data set, refinish your furniture, and the whole while quote young Frankenstein from memory. That sounds all right. In preparation for this happy occasion, I asked Amber and Zach to complete a little homework assignment in which they described their love story to me. They did this assignment independently and without knowledge of the other's answers. I also completed one of the most important duties of a wedding officiant, which is that I launched a full scope investigation of your social media accounts, <laughs> and I interviewed all your friends. <laughs> so I now have the authority to talk about your love, and I also know that you qualify to become guardians in the United States Space Force. <laughs> I'm interested. Zach and Amber, you oh, yeah. told me that you met, it's true, you do, you met nine years ago at an audition, which is not surprising given that you share a love of the theatrical arts and storytelling. When I asked you to describe that first date, Zach said, and I quote, it was crazy rainy and we were unprepared for that. While Amber explained that when she met Zach, he was sopping wet, his clothes were sticking to him, and the first thing he said to her was, I don't believe in umbrellas. <laughs> yeah. I had reason to say in the next room. But in the presence of all who are gathered here today, I am really excited to announce that Amber let me know that Zach's relationship to umbrellas has significantly That's improved. Right. <laughs> I've grown. When I asked you about what drew you to each other, you told me that on that first date, you could talk to each other about almost anything for hours at a time, that you felt the comfort and friendship to be long-winded, to disagree. You felt at ease. You still feel this way. Amber said to me, I've literally never run out of things to talk to Zach about. He's my best friend. And Zach echoed this sentiment. He said, Amber is my best friend, and she's the person that I trust the most. After all this time, she's still the person I want to talk to my day about, She's the person I want to come to in times of joy and success. I don't know what's more important than that. No matter what type of day it's been, I want Amber to know about it. In the years that followed your first date, you've done life together as best friends. You are really good at celebrating your lives. You don Halloween costumes, you pick pumpkins, you celebrate promotions and all major bank holidays. <laughs> You go to Ren Fairs, you get the coveted picture in front of the Christmas tree. You're the couple that has plans to visit every Michelin star restaurant within 100 square miles. And also, you're gonna have a hamburger bun and a 4th of July cookout. That's true. And while I know you know how to throw one hell of a jamboree, when I asked how you spend your most precious days together, you both reported to me that it was the everyday interactions you most enjoy. And it was also then that I learned that you have developed your own private language. Both of you told me your best days are spent, quote, blooping around, <laughs> 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 
which to the best of my understanding means unstructured time, lifting weights, grocery shopping, <laughs> gossiping about all of us. <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> You also explained that often these days are spent wallotting, which stands for walking around and looking at things, <laughs> which I'm told is a premium activity that so gives you good. lots of time to add new words to your unhinged lexicon. <laughs> After thorough research, it's my understanding that all wallotting is blooping, but not all blooping is wallotting. Yeah. <laughs> In these everyday moments, you've shared some treasured memories. Amber told me something that I was shocked to hear, which is that you, Zach, are famously quirky. <laughs> she told me <laughs> she once walked in on Zach trying to chisel apart five pounds of frozen turkey with a screwdriver. <laughs> <laughs> that definitely happened. And, we, <laughs> and when she walked in on this horrifying <laughs> scene, her beloved fiance, a combination of tool time Tim Allen and also Leonardo DiCaprio from The Revenant, she told me that you whipped around and bellowed, I've made a terrible mistake. <laughs> <laughs> who doesn't love a man who can admit he's wrong? <laughs> On the other hand, Zach, when I asked you to produce a story that might reveal one of Amber's quirks, you, Zach, valuing your life and also <laughs> in preparation for marriage, opted to sidestep the question altogether <laughs> and instead wrote of Amber, zero quirks, Amber is regular. The real regular lady. <laughs> Instead, Zach told me that Amber is one of the most actively conscientious people he has ever met. In his words, almost suspiciously so. <laughs> he said, I thought Amber was maybe laying it on thick when I first met her, but she's just genuinely nice and cares about her friends. Amber will do the right, just, ethical, or moral thing, even at great inconvenience or cost to herself. Amber is the exact person who will make sure everyone else has a piece of pie before she serves herself. Something that you both seem to understand intuitively and something I admire about you both is that good caretaking is not just warm feelings. It's effort, planning, and logistics. And for God's sakes, your dating anniversary is literally tax day. <laughs> I looked it up, by the way, and this is true. Your new anniversary, so today, is National Checklist Day. I know. I know, right? I made so many. <laughs> It's fitting. It is also the end of British summertime and National Haunted Refrigerator Day. Yeah. More things to celebrate. <laughs> Amber and Zach, you both use your impressive executive function and groundedness to make life, it's true, to make life easier and gentler for each other. Amber said love is considering another person when you make even minor decisions, like what coffee beans to buy. Mm. And from their housemate and best man, Drew, and my <laughs> wonderful friend, Drew, I learned that Amber not only thinks of Zach when she buys coffee, she also makes Z coffee for Zach almost every morning. On weekends, when Zach has a tendency to sleep in late, as we all do, mm -hmm. Amber will wake him up with coffee before he even has a chance to get a caffeine headache. This effort goes two ways. When Amber seems sad, Zach heads to the kitchen and makes her pancakes. <laughs> and everyone, everyone, everyone says that because Amber adores flowers, Zach buys them for her all the time, even signing her up for regular flower delivery subscri subscriptions. In his words, and remember, the bride's name is Amber for this joke, burrs deserve fleurs. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> It's true. <laughs> 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 <You're> doing, <laughs> it's just this care <laughs> yeah, it's true. This caretaking is also in service of making each other's boldest wishes come true. A few years ago, it was Zach's birthday wish to be a fancy chef and hold a fancy dinner. And Amber went full tilt into supporting Zach's dream. She worked to plan menus and print menus and taste tested recipes over the course of weeks, if not months. 
Amber even bought Zach a fancy chef's coat for the event. And this effort uh, was also in full display when you, Zach, worked to make Amber's unique and precious dreams come true. Amber is a lover of books. In college, she literally studied book arts. And she learned how to print and bind her own books. And Ulysses, to Amber's mind, was the Everest of books. And so to propose, you track down the things she would uniquely appreciate, a beautiful first edition copy. copy. And you presented it to her as a symbol of how much you see and value her. I love the story of Chef Roberts and first edition copy of Ulysses because it shows how well you understand each other. Amber explained that your love felt like it blossomed from a place of being truly known and seen and the way you know and see your best friends. Zach said of your love that the thing that matters is finding what works for you, the weird human who's shaped by all the millions of specific ingredients, the successes and traumas and thoughts and experiences, and being brave or silly or honest enough to expose that to another person and also let them show their specific selves back to you. Not only do you see each other, you really like what you see. <laughs> one, one of your friends, Melissa, said it best when she told me, they delight in each other. <laughs> <laughs> I thought. No, just kidding. It's just true. Kidding. Amber and Zach, this is not some fly-by-night shot in the dark love. You know each other. And although I know that you will grow and change a thousand times over, you arrive here fully informed about the person you're about to marry. This is a love built on friendship, a love built on being loud and goofy and opinionated, a love built on sharing your day at work, your secret fears. It's a love built on structure and systems and bills paid on time but also on being romantics, swept away by theater and music and dreams of being Remy the Rat from Ratatouille. <laughs> <laughs> it's built on shared ambition, big bold adventures, trips abroad, and also just lazy days where you bloop around and put in the small but consistent effort to show that you care. I do not wish for your compatibility because you have that in strides. My wish for you is that when life gets hard, you continue to remember to choose this love in big ways and small. My wish for you is that you remember that you fell in love because you could talk for hours and listen for days. Remember to share the mental and emotional and logistical lift of household labor and adulthood. Remember to appreciate and respect each other as quirky individuals. Remember to take pictures, go see musicals, sing to each other, celebrate well, and connect with this community. Remember that you're very lucky to have found the person who will wake you up before you get the headache, the person who will make you pancakes when you're sad, who will teach you to believe in umbrellas, and who will talk to you in a language only you two understand. <laughs> I love you both, and I'm so happy for you. You're the real deal. Congratulations. Well, thank you. <laughs> At this time, Amber and Zach have invited Rebecca Spees to read a prose poem written by Laura Jean Hennebry entitled, I Will Love You. Oh, yes, of course. Thank you. <laughs> That's probably helpful. Like yeah, that cool. cool. <laughs> I will love you. If you become a viridescent scaled dragon coveting skyscrapers of gold coins and twinkling rubies. And I will love you even if the holes worn through the threads of the pits of your sweaters only yawn wider. I will love you even if you could never make it to Mordor. I will love you if you do the Sunday crossword in pen. Even if you scarf and toast your tongue on the piping hot cinnamon buns as save none for me. I will love you if you decide to torch our world with Molotov cocktails, and I will love you as we slow dance barefoot and bloodied in soot and rubble. I will love you if you are mauled by a shark and the only things that remain are the tatters of your remains. I will love you if I lose all sight, smell, and taste, and then I will fall in love with the craggy edges that make up your face. I will love you how a child loves the chorus of waves somersaulting in a seashell, and I will love you like that seashell loves the thrash of rocky undulations. I will love you 
Even if I find out you used Hashimoto cheat codes, I will love you like up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, be a start. I will love you how chocolate cake loves Bruce Bogtrotter. I will love you how the swamp of sadness loves our tax. And I will love you if the swamp of sadness decides to swallow you too. I will love you until the hourglass runs out of sand and then I will love you for longer than time can bend. I will love you how Leia loved Han. I will love you long after every speckled cow comes home. I will love you even if I disappear into the depths of the sea and get devoured by a devouring monster who loves to devour things. My love for you will bubble up its throat while bubbling in the hearth of its wicked belly. I will love you if I turn into a werewolf and even still I will love you with every lonesome howl. I will love you as forever loves tomorrow. I will love you how a photograph cradles a memory and I will love you when I disintegrate into the nebulas of outer space. Each of my minuscule bits will love you no matter how far they separate. Mm-hmm. I got a blot. Amber and Zach have each written a personal reflection on their relationship and the love they have for one another, and they will read these reflections now. Okay. To Amber. (laughs) I wrote a title. It's, It's been almost two years since I proposed, and in that time I've had hundreds of different thoughts on why I love Amber and why we should get married. The thoughts don't vacillate between pros and cons, but different reasons and examples take turns floating to the top in representing the multitudinous reasons why I love you and why we should get married. To save us all the time and to bring all of those reasons to a singular reduction, I can say plainly that you have been, since we met, my best friend. Nothing I'm saying here should be news to you. I hope that I'm keeping you fully aware of the extent of my love and the unwavering confidence I have in our partnership. Within the simple oath of I do, I hope you know there are thousands of nestled I love yous and words of affirmation but in this public moment, I will happily try to spell out some of the reasons. And I didn't have no previous knowledge of her speech. So some of these are, you're going to hear them again. <laughs> so you are the person that I feel the most like my authentic self around and the person who I trust the most. You indulge my quirks and embrace my inner chaos muppet. You bring me coffee when I am so, so sleepy. You remember all of the inside jokes I've told and nonsensical phrases I've coined and continually add to our canon of relationship argot. You care about your friendships and put tremendous amounts of love and care into them. You are ambitious and pragmatic and thoughtful with your dreams and desires. You support and love me and let me wholeheartedly support and love you back. You gently push me to become the best person I can be while loving me exactly where I am at any given moment. You are legitimately and without irony, one of the smartest and funniest people I've ever met. You are a good and kind woman. In return, I pledge to do everything I can to continually uphold my end of the bargain, something made even more beautiful and wonderful because we've made the conscious decision to refrain from inheriting anyone else's definition of what bargain we are making and instead choosing to continually define it together for the rest of our life. In many ways, nothing will change after today, and in other ways, everything will change. We don't really know. (laughs) I can imagine a wide range of how things will change and how our life will progress, but in all of those imagined futures, I know we will love and support each other. I am excited to marry you as 30-somethings, grateful for the 20-somethings we were when we met, and can't wait to turn into the 40-somethings and 50-somethings and on and on we will be together. I don't know what those people will look like, but I promise to continue to be your best friend and partner as we get there. I also titled mine. (laughs) The title of mine is 10-30-2022.
<laughs> when I was in seventh grade, I was part of a weekly small group. One week over cream cheese danishes, we were talking about our ideal future husbands. I said that mine would be taller than me. La 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 la. Smart and funny and handsome with a good job. And he had to like theater and would obviously be a singer so he could sing to me at my wedding. Uh, the adult women leading the small group laughed and said all of those requirements would be almost impossible to fill and I was going to have to settle. <laughs> Dear reader, I did not. <laughs> I guess they were right about one thing. I did opt out of the wedding serenade, though I think you would have if I had asked. <laughs> I feel so proud, so honored, so flabbergasted to be here becoming your wife. <laughs> Today is such a big day, but truly it's the culmination of so many little days together. We joke all the time about how vacations are nice, but real life is nicer. And you are so much a part of my real life. I'm looking forward to years of blooping and Bob's Burgers reruns and walking around and looking at things, which is what walleting is, <laughs> and making you coffee and ignoring my laundry and becoming experts on sherry and heirloom cider and maybe, just maybe, learning to love overhead press, but good luck with that last one. It's the worst. I think every married couple on earth claims to be marrying or married to their best friend. We are actually doing it. You are one of the smartest and funniest people I've ever met. You are kind and considerate and generous. I can be my truly authentic, deeply weird, silly voiced self around you with no fear or judgment. Your support and constant proclaiming of fleurs for birds with an armful of flowers at the end of a hard week or even just because is the stuff people dream of. And that is my reality. It feels like kismet, like a meet cute, like fate that we met and were partnered in a terrible audition just hours after I'd stepped off the train in DC. Such a bad audition. <laughs> and perhaps a little script doctoring by the universe that we reconnected at another terrible audition months later. <laughs> Two awful companies. And we'll always have tax day, we won't we? I don't know what the future holds for us, but I have never been more certain that you are the right choice for me and that I am on the best possible team. To quote Nora Ephron, I came here tonight because when you realize you want to spend the rest of your life with somebody, you want the rest of your life to start as soon as possible. I love you, I love you, I love you, Zachary Todd Roberts, and I'm so excited to be your wife, Burr. <laughs> Amber and Zach, please join hands. Amber, please repeat after me. I promise to share my life openly with you. I promise to share my life openly with you. And to speak the truth to you in love. And to speak the truth to you in love. I promise to care for you. I promise to care for you. And encourage you to explore, grow, and dream. And encourage you to explore, grow, and dream. I promise to love and honor who we are as individuals. I promise to love and honor who we are as individuals. And who we will become together. And who we will become together. Through every season of our lives. Through every season of our lives. Thank you. Zach, please repeat after me. I promise to speak my life openly with you. I promise to speak my life openly with you. And speak the truth to you in love. And speak the truth to you in love. I promise to care for you. I promise to care for you. And encourage you to explore, grow, and dream. And encourage you to explore something and dream. <laughs> <laughs> what was the one? Grow. Grow, explore, <laughs> grow, and dream. <laughs> Line. <laughs> I promise to love and honor who we are as individuals. I'm getting stressed here now. I promise to, <laughs> say it one more time. It's okay. I promise to love and honor who we are as individuals. I promise to honor and love 
who we are as individuals. And who we will become together. And who we will become together. Through every season of our lives. Through every season of our lives. Amber and Zach have opted to exchange rings. There is evidence that humans have exchanged matrimonial jewelry for more than 135,000 years. Amber's family has strong Irish heritage and much of the design of the modern engagement ring has its roots in the Irish understanding of the three symbolic pieces of the ring. The band symbolizes the encircling arms of friendship, the center stone a heart, and the setting a crown of loyalty. Part of Zach's family has roots in Greece, and from the Greeks, we get the idea of rings as unending commitments, a circle with no end, but an opening that provides the couple a portal to the future. The Greeks give us the tradition of placing the ring on the fourth finger of the left hand, the finger believed to be directly connected to the human heart. Toby, do you have the rings? I do. Thank you. Amber, as you place this ring on Zach's left hand, please repeat after me. This ring is a token of my love for you. This ring is a token of my love for you. And a symbol of my commitment. And a symbol of my commitment. To doing my best to live out our lives together. To doing my best to live out our lives together. And make our garden grow. And make our garden grow. <laughs> Zach. As you place this ring on Amber's left hand, please repeat after me. This ring is a token of my love for you. This ring is a token of my love for you. And a symbol of my commitment. And a symbol of my commitment. To doing my best to live out our lives together. To doing my best to living our lives together. And make our garden grow. And make our garden grow. Beloved friends and family gathered here, I now ask for your blessing. There are many gifts in this life, but the gift of a thoughtful, caring, and generous community is among the rarest. You've helped them prepare for auditions and study for tests. You have known them since childhood, since adolescence, since they moved into the neighborhood or cubicle beside you. You have come alongside them and loved them as your chosen family. You know their silliest quirks and their most precious dreams. So I ask of you, will you continue to support Amber and Zach individually and collectively as they journey together in partnership? If so, please answer, we will. We will. Thank you. Do you, Zach, take Amber to be your wife, to learn and grow with, to explore and adventure with, to respect her in everything as an equal partner? willing to undertake the challenges of the unknown and uncertain together for as long as you both shall live. I do. <laughs> and do you, Amber, take Zach to be your husband, to learn and grow with, to explore and adventure with, to respect him in everything as an equal partner, willing to undertake the challenges of the unknown and uncertain together for as long as you both shall live. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Amber and Zach, you have come here today of your own free will and in the presence of family and friends, you have declared your love and commitment to each other. You have given and received a ring as a symbol of your promises. By the power of your love and commitment to each other and by the power vested in me by the DC Marriage Bureau, I now <laughs> pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss your bride! <laughs> and friends, it is now my great honor to present to you for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Zach Roberts and Amber Gibson. Woo!